Hey everybody, Kanji back with another playthrough of Ascension the deck building game. This time we're going to play the second expansion for Ascension, which is Storm of Souls. The story goes that somehow returned in the first expansion, we go ahead and we laid waste him and we killed him, but in doing so all the souls that are not allowed to pass on now it had an adverse effect so now souls are starting to rip apart vigil and we have to go and find a solution to that um as you know ascension was made by uh, designed by robert downey john uh, fiorillo justin gray and brian keebler and it was published by arclight asma d marabunta and stoneblade entertainment so we'll go ahead and get into this and see if we can save visual once again. So we go to offline, create game, and I pick offline as you can see because uh, the Steam version which I'm playing here is uh, an online or offline game, but if you play offline you can play against the AI, which I'm going to do here, and as before you see me, Kanji is just there ready to face off and we're going to pick this expansion storm of souls there are plenty of other expansion plus promo cards but we'll step through those as we continually go through so this expansion if you if you look here so uh chronicles of the god slayer was a four player game um return of the fallen which is what we played last time against samile was just a two player game you could combine the two and still play a four player game but if you're going to play this expansion by itself it's going to be a two-player game. But then when we go to uh, Storm of Souls, it goes back to the four-player game aspect. Now, these cards all have different mechanics, uh, these expansions do, but you can combine them all into one massive set, and you can play a six-player game if you want. I think it'll be a, turns will be like a really long D&D game, which I love D&D, by the way. Um, but you can just play up to one to six players, but I think one to four, um, a four player game, a three to four player game is where this game really hits that sweet spot. So if you're going to play, buy this game, take it to your tabletop. If you have three to four players, I think you're really going to enjoy this game. So let's get into Storm of Souls. Alright, well, let's see what's happening. Alright, the usual buy that the computer does first. So let's take a second here before I go to kind of make some understandings of what's happening. Monsters now have trophies. So remember when I defeated Samael in my last one that he was a trophy that I can put in my hand and uh, any monster I defeat became a t uh, combat points for me? Well, now other monsters have, have trophies as well. This one here says you may banish this to, to draw two cards. So where Samael had an ongoing effect, regular trophy monsters just have a one-time effect that you can proc on your turn at any time. So... And they added this event mechanic. So the event mechanics come up that, and these revolve. So as specific triggers happen, the event will shift and you can kind of see what uh, their specific cards that tells you to change the event when it goes through. Now, like last time, remember, I sped up the AI just to speed up gameplay. Uh, so you can see my turn go through and kind of get a better understanding of my technique, but you can slow down the AI so that you can see the AI's technique as well. But for me, since I've been playing this so long, I know the AI goes mechana and then just kind of tries to wail on me the entire time. So this event says all constructs are all mechana constructs. So whether that's lifebound, enlightened, vo or void, they're all considered mechana constructs. When a con so a trophy happens when a construct you control would be destroyed, you may prevent it from being destroyed. So these events have event trophies. They vary wildly, and you'll see them build in different expansions that come up as we go through this playthrough, but just bear in mind that they vary very wildly, so we'll just have to play them as they come. Uh, this specific one I had never seen because the other event cards that were there kind of took their place, but we'll play and we'll go. So this basically means if there are any monsters that would destroy my constructs, this won't happen at all. This will, it, it, I can prevent it from happening, but it also works for the AI as well, which isn't that great. So as usual, you start off with 10 cards, eight apprentices, which is worth one by power each, and two militia, which is worth two combat points each. So let's go ahead and play all. And so all we can really write is a bronze drone or a grease monk, you may pay one less. So they're both construct based, this weapon, 
303V. Once per turn, you may play a mechanic construct with this one, and you gain three. Mm, I'm not about that life this round. I'm going to get a Mystic and an Infantry, because this is one for one, which really doesn't lend to any better buy power. And then we'll end that. And then from there, of course you know he's going to go Mechana. Now the rest of the hand comes through. Notice this is your draw deck on the left, and this is your discard deck on the right. If you want to see what's there, because I didn't explain it so long as you can right cl uh, left click, sorry, and then left click it again, it'll go away. So you can see uh, what you've already discarded. So hit play. And I'm going to do that. Oh, and I didn't explain this. So we have the cultist, which you've seen me lay the smack down on him a few times. But now we have the fanatic. So the fanatic is an interesting card. The fanatic is a trophy monster. It's a cultist that's a trophy monster. And what it does is it gives you the same crystal points as the cultist. But when you defeat the fanatic, it becomes a trophy monster that you can trigger the event trophy effect whenever you, uh, whenever you play it. And that's just its pure purpose. The Fanatic and the Cultist are the exact same, except for the Fanatic's uh, main priority is to trigger the event that needs to happen. So we're going to hit the Cultist because the Fanatic is one more combat point. Usually what you want to do for a strategy is get at least one of these in your hand because you can't stack more than one. Let me say that. Have the one, but you can't stack more than one. So if you have one Fanatic... If you defeat it, if you defeat another fanatic, you're not going to get two fanatics. You're just going to get one, and that's all you're allowed to have. Otherwise, you can stack up and trigger the event and just kind of break the game. Alrighty. Let's go ahead and go up there. We've got six by power. Um, and I'll hit the cultist. I'm going to go monster heavy on this one, so this turn I'm going to go into monster defeat mode. Because these monsters are raging, these lost souls, if you notice they're all have noxious soul, vandal soul, because the souls have just gone wild after Samile's defeat. Uh, I'm, but I'll get one mystic and end my turn there because I can't do anything with one and one. I don't have a construct. So let me go ahead and hit play. Now I'm going to, I'll get this lifebound card. And now I can get a fanatic. So the fanatic goes into my hand and it says you may banish this to gain the current event trophy. So nothing really to gain because it's just construct destroy as you can see here, right click to make it show up. And the AI loves to get the fanatics. They, he goes nuts for that. So I'm going to get a mystic because I have a lot. And I'm going to hit the cultist because I already have a fanatic. I can't get two. And you know what's going to be worth one point each. So I can show you because that one combat point will be wasted anyway. If I defeat a fanatic, see it goes into the void. It doesn't come to my hand because I already have a fanatic. So we go ahead and hit play. Okay, I can smack the cultist twice to get two points. And I have, I will get two infantry because let's make use of what we have. This seven one's pretty nice. Shuffle my deck, get a new set of hands. That hurt. So basically what, what he did was he played this card that said each opponent must discard a card at random from their hand. And randomly uh, it picked one of my cards and ditched it. Which was not awesome at all. That wasn't cool. I'm stuck buying a lot of Mystics and Heavy Infantry and nothing's coming up. So this is one of those cases where... Uh, wow, he is doing a lot. Uh, I'm going to put a combat on top of my deck. All right, so let's pause here for a second. So this is a lot just happened <laughs> that you just saw. Uh, basically, he played the, you may banish a card in the center row, which he uh, banished the elemental adept. And what it said, the elemental, that said, okay, well, once I defeat that monster, you can 
add a card back on top of your deck, which is what I just did. Uh, the one thing that happens here is you notice that I'm, get, I'm getting a lot of these plus one apprentices, which is clogging up me from doing much. And I don't know if you watched the previous, but if you didn't, I'll say it again. Um, void cards are great for milling those out of your deck, but I'm not being very... I'm not getting a lot of void here, so it's not really working out for me to start trashing those apprentices. And you saw in another playthrough that there was a card that let me switch them out for Mystics or Heavy Infantry. Well, I'm not seeing a lot of those here either, so it's what it is. And it's the luck of the draw. So, uh, the play all, I'll do that to throw everything up because there's no nothing in specific sequence that I can really deal with. You can do one by itself if you want to do sequences, but no sequences are there for me. When a honey enters, each player must put a hero from their discard pile on the top. So that's what caused that. So for a four by, I get two by this one, and I draw a card. I'm going for the Star Child. Okay, a new fate has happened. Look at the top card of your deck. You may put it into your discard pile. You may discard this top card. Oh, it says may, right? And usually when you see may means you have a choice. This one, not so much with Fates. Oh, there he is. Okay, so it did give me that when I clicked on it. So I'll say put back on my deck. I don't want to lose that. He chose to discard his. I fight the Cultist. And I turn. Alrighty. That hurt. So then he plays it, draws two cards, and I'm getting slaughtered this turn because the cards are not coming up for me. I would love the Cyril Runic Alpha, but there's really nothing less. You may pay one less the next time. I'll get both of these because he would grab them. Infantry, smack the cultist, can't do anything else, and the turn. The cards are not in Kanji's favor. He's killing all the monsters, racking up. See, he's at 21, I'm at 10. Uh, boy. And I had to discard a card, which wasn't great. So if I beat this, I'll just get two attack. If I beat this one, they have he has to destroy a construct. He has he has two constructs. Let's go ahead and defeat this so he has to get rid of a construct. So he's down to one now, as you can see, because I made him ditch one. Uh, Draw two cards and discard one. Because I have apprentices and I can't mill my deck, this is probably the best way to just kind of get... Uh, and look at that. Awesome. Of course, he'll buy one to start deck milling. Defeat the monster. Okay, notice the event just changed. And he is completely destroying me here. Uh, discard that. I don't want that card. All right. So, the new event. Once during this turn, when a player discards any number of cards, they may return one of them to their hand and the event trophies to draw a card. So remember this fanatic that I've been saving up? I can use it right now and it will let me draw a card because I can claim the event trophy, which is not great. He has destroyed all the monsters, so I have no monsters to defeat now that I can defeat a monster. Um... This is not really great for Kanji. I'm gonna, the, sure I'll get the Everbloom. Ah, there we go. Monster defeat, so that worked out. Yeah, I'm getting rid of this. He's not getting that. And then I'll get another Fanatic and defeat a Cultist and wait till my next turn to play that. So he has six combat. He burns the Fanatic to get another card, so he has one. Didn't really do anything for him. But he'll keep card drawing, which is crazy. So I'm going to burn my Fanatic. And then hit play on all of them. So, And if you control Umbral Edge. So there are two cards here for this. This is one of those Synergize cards where uh, they're both Void Constructs, so I can end up getting two from this, two from uh, Umbral Edge, and then I gain an additional two. So it would give me two, four, six if I'm able to get that combination of combat every turn. That would be a nice combat one, but combat has not been my friend. 
I'm going to grab Cyril and hope I didn't make the biggest mistake ever. So let's see. And he's going to banish this card to draw another card. Then he's going to banish his Fanatic to draw another card so that he can pick up the Snake Shaman. The computer is decimating me this turn. Alright, let's see, we'll, I'll pick up Femoral, Femoral Edge, and smack the Cultist. I've got 20 points, he's got 33, so it's 13 point lead. I'd be more confident if the cards were in my favor, but they're not. Eh, it happens, that's how it works. What you gonna do? You gain one, you may pay one less next time you acquire a hero, I'll do that. Defeat any monster with three or less, you don't have to pay combat. Sure, why not? And you may banish a card in your hand if you do gain an additional one, which would have been awesome for death milling, but, you know, that's how it goes. Uh, hmm, let's see if I can burn this to draw a card, to then draw two cards. Ooh. I can discard one. I haven't, this isn't going to benefit me because I haven't played any, so I'll ditch that. You may, dis, you may put a discarded card into your hand. Any, uh, yeah. Where's the card that I just discarded? There it is. So I discarded it, put it back in my hand. And so how was I able to do that, you ask? because of the event. Once during turn, when a player discards any number of cards, they may return one of them to their hand. And that's how that's possible. So I'll play that, I'll play that. Get my deck milling going. Um, oh my goodness. All the monsters come out when, at the end of my turn, he's got combat for days. So, five combat. Which he gets a trunk to get six, so he defeats the Hoarding Tyrant. And that is the way the ball bounces. So I will get a Fanatic. Because my card tells me to defeat a monster with three or less, the Fanatic has three. I will burn it to draw a card. I will hit another Fanatic. Burn it to draw a card. Hit another Fanatic. <laughs> so you see how you can continually chain this. Burn this to draw one. Once per turn, you may destroy a mechanic construct you control to gain one of the current events mechanic and an additional one. So, this is interesting. If he gets Kog'Maw, then he can constantly mill this card with Event Enlightened because he will discard it, get it back, discard it, you know, and then just keep doing that once per turn while this enlight while this enlightened event is happening. Which that's insane. Uh, let's see. Would I give him Kog'Maw, though? I don't know. I don't want to spend six just like that. Uh, I get two Mystics because my buy power is just awful this turn. So he's thinking, which means a big play's coming. He's going to defeat this monster. And then he's going to get Kog'Maw. Gain five, choose one, destroy all even constructs I control or destroy all. I have none, so I don't have to worry about that, but he will get this five money for this. So, oh, he didn't, it didn't work out that way. Interesting, all right. So, I'm gonna see if I can get some more card draw out of this. Ooh, so. I played this card before. So this Unite ability, let's talk about that for a second. Basically, Unite happens when you've already played a lifebound hero. You can then, when you play this card, you gain the benefit of that last lifebound. Gain this effects once if you play or have played another lifebound hero this turn. So I play it, I got the three, and then, that is, and then the eight for doing that. So the three so I can get to eight, and then because I played the last lifebound hero, the Unite immediately triggers, and that's what Unite means. You just kind of gel cards together. So I'm going to go for Lionheart. This is a free construct. This is a free fanatic. I'm going to defeat this fanatic. 
to draw another card. Draw another card. So I'm back up to five, but I can't beat this guy or this guy. Me beating him would be fantastic. Draw three cards, then discard two cards or one enlightened card. I don't have a lot of enlightened cards, so I don't want to destroy two. So I will do a mystic and a heavy infantry. Can't do anything with my one in my turn. All right, so the computer's got something nasty planned. Usually when they take this long, the AI is just really cooking up something that's gonna hurt me. So gets a free card. Okay. You, he's united it, so he gets three points plus three crystals. Then look at the top card of your deck. You may put it into discard pile, draw a card, which you saw come out. He, he, uh, that happened. Same thing again. So draw another card. All right, what's he doing now? Draw a card, you may banish a card from your hand. If you do, draw an additional card if the current event is void, so it's not. So he gets a card. Dis well, he discards a card. If you do, draw an additional card, which he did. I don't have any constructs to kill, but he gets that five pointer, then he grabbed Kogma, which I knew he would. So Femoral Edge, Everbloom, and the rest. So. Femoral Edge is glowing. When it glows, you probably can't see because I'm obscuring it slightly, but uh, I'll go ahead and click on it. So when it glows, that means that you can just click on it. It'll blow up and say, hey, do you want to use this? And yeah, I do. I'd like to get five attack this, this round so I can buy a Fanatic. Mill the Fanatic for a new card. Banish a card in your hand or discard pile. We have 31 crystals left to go. We're getting close to the end game. Yet there is nothing I can do about it. So I'll get that so I can do as best as I can. And we'll keep... Oh, it drew. So let's see what happens. So he's got some nasty stuff that's going to start proccing here. He's going for the Hoarding Tyrant, for sure. And I'm sure he wants Prime. Acquire a construct or gain three crystals. So that's five. There's six, so Horde Tyrant's his for four extra points. Crystals, sorry. Okay, so that's the two. He spends his four to get that, and then he defeats. All right, so let's look in my... Let's see, you may banish a card in your hand if you do gain an additional one. So I'm going to ditch this apprentice and just start milling my deck, because that's getting annoying not being able to do much. Uh, mm -hmm. Let's see, you may banish a card in your hand if you do gain an additional So the Nifflemancer are just points. We're getting close to the end game, so let's just go for points. And then hit the cultist once. And end my turn. All right, so he's going to start doing his thing. Now, like I said, when you see the AI churn, he's got a plan coming up. I mean, he's got some attack, which means he's three attack. He'll hit the Fanatic, draw, spend that to draw a new card. Uh, so he gets another Fanatic because he had a free points. Then he gets another Fanatic, and he just keeps going with it. Uh, I have nothing to combat, which is not awesome, but I'm going to buy this Nifflemancer. The Shadowcaster doesn't do much, but let's start doing my milling here. Draw two cards and discard one. So I will discard one, but the event triggers go all the way to the end or the top because it goes from left to right. Put it back in my hand. Play that one. Play that one. Get another Fanatic. Go ahead and I use that trophy. Draw another card. Play that because I can't discard anything that's really there. Uh, I'll spend two. Buy another Fanatic. I should have probably hang, hung on to that too. What do you think? It would have given me three, so no big deal. Um, but I just get those in my discard pile. And because the Fanatic's happening, that's why you see the slowdown on the AI. I have it set to super fast. 
but when it's trying to chain through a lot of items, uh, the program just kind of chugs a little bit, but it gets there as soon as it works through all the fanatics, uh, the fanatic orders that they're going to do things. I think Asmodee, when they built this, they really did really well with, with the code, with the programming to get everything fair. Sometimes you're like, how's it able to do that? But if you, if you slow it down and you look back and see what it did, then you can make sense of it. So it's at 73 with all the work he's been doing. I mean, he's been killing level 5, uh, getting 5 crystal monsters, 6 crystal monsters. And I haven't really been doing much this turn, so it's it's been pretty rough for me. Uh, once per turn, when you acquire a hero, you may put it in your hand. That way I can... Uh, I'm going to grab Prime. And now, because we're at the end game, as usual, I'm looking at crystals at the top. So... Uh, let's get a fanatic to draw a new card. It's apprentices, I wasn't, I was not able to get rid of them fast enough. If he gets the last seven crystals, they're gonna call the game because the deficit is just so great that there's no way that I can come back. And the the AI is good for that. It's like add up your cards, add up your points. Are they close enough that one that one final round can happen? The rules on tabletop, just so you know, the last person who grabs the last crystal, what you're going to do is you're going to have everyone else gets to go, and when the turn comes back around to that last person, they don't go. The game ends. So keep that in mind when you, if you buy this for your tabletop and your group, that when I, when you're when the the person who's playing grabs the last crystal that's there, you basically everyone else goes, and when it gets back around to them game's over and then you just start adding up points to see who won that person does not get to go again so yeah he's he's definitely for sure all right so let's see so you may banish a card if you do yeah i've got really nothing to gain by this um, get some attack play all to draw a card i may defeat a monster i'm gonna defeat a fanatic and then come back and run that, and then do it there. Defeat the fanatic again, come back and come in here. We can just keep doing this, defeat the fanatic, come back, as long as they keep giving me combat, I'm gonna keep defeating the fanatic and hoping that I can do something with whatever I have left. Uh, you may banish the card in your hand if you do get an additional one. Okay, I can't beat the Fanatic anymore, so I have to face the facts. Um, let's see, what can we gain that would be worth it? I gain an elemental adept, and then I will end my turn, and that should be it. Look at this. Kanju was destroyed this turn, but you know what? We'll get back at him next time. He had 79 crystals that he picked up, 52 points in his card for a total of 131. I had 47 crystals. Only 51 points. So the card count was close, but the crystal count just wasn't there. And so he was able to bypass and beat me. So that's pretty much it uh, for Storm of Souls. Uh, we Vigil got wrecked, but that's okay. Uh, I'm sure in your playthrough that you will be super successful and not lose and have a bad card draw as I had. So uh, see you in the next expansion, and we'll keep it going. As always, I really appreciate you uh, for taking the time to watch this. If you have any questions or comments, leave them in the comments below. I will answer them as quickly as I can. All right, have a good day. Bye.